Welcome to everyone in Steelers Nation. I'm Stan Saverin, and it's our great pleasure to welcome in Steeler great, iconic Hall of Famer, Dermonte Dawson. Dermonte, welcome. Great to see you. Stan, thank you. Glad to be back in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Uh, when you broke into the NFL, when you were drafted in the second round of Kentucky, you played one year with and sometimes alongside Mike Webster. Yes. And I'm wondering, as you moved to center full time, was Webby able to sort of help you out and give you some tips to play the position at the NFL level? No, Mike wasn't able to give me any uh, uh, tips to, uh, you know, help me out with center position. But, you know, just just kind of watching Mike in practice and the way he kind of uh, prepared uh, in the weight room, in the film room. And then I would ask Mike, I said, Mike, you know, why do you write down every word that the coach is saying? Because Mike was in his 15th year, my rookie year. So, but he said he wanted to make sure he had it ingrained in his brain so that he could, so he didn't have to think about it. So just looking at Mike as, as an example and watching the way he prepared, I tried to do the same thing when they named me the starting center my second year. And um, it, it, it paid off, it paid off. So many of the young offensive linemen, uh, Tone Chilkin, rest in peace, Craig yeah. Wolfley, they just followed him around uh, like it was like a quail with a little quail children behind yeah. because of the example that Mike set. Well, I mean, you know, what better, ex I mean, you, you got to learn from the best. So, you know, and, and Mike was uh, one of the best uh, ever to play the game. And, you know, why not try to emulate him, uh, the things he did, and, you know, as far as preparation and, uh, you know, training. Um, and I think it benefited a, a lot of uh, linemen that uh, kind of followed Mike. Now people emulate you following your lead, and you created sort of a different vibe for the center position, not only with the Steelers, but the NFL. Um, because of how quick you were, how fast you were, uh, they had you pulling on a lot of plays. Do you feel like in your own way that you were a trendsetter in the way the position is played and is still being played today? Uh, somewhat, yeah, because I mean, it wasn't done on a regular basis and it wasn't incorporated into many offices. Um, you know, so I think when we started doing that in 92, um, we started preparing for a regular season game every Monday um, in training camp. And I can't remember if it was Philly or something, whatever team it was, but I told Coach and those guys, I said, we're having a, a problem getting to the second level. So I told Coach, I said, look, I was a pulling guard. I said, we can try, you know, I can snap the ball, pull, make a false call. Uh, to the guard, a live call or a false call, and he would take my responsibility or I would block the down guy. And we started to fool around with it in practice, and then next thing you know, Ron Earhart said, uh, he said, I think this is going to be good. You know, so him and Coach Cower uh, allowed me to, um, you know, kind of intercede and just kind of add that uh, to the offense. And I think now everybody's trying to do it, or everybody is, they are doing it. You mentioned Coach Cower. Um, I can't imagine a greater thrill as an NFL player than being inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But I'm wondering your feeling in watching your coach, Bill Cower, get inducted. What was your feeling, your thoughts as that was occurring? Oh, it was great. I mean, you know, that's the ultimate uh, uh, gift or award for us, uh, you know, being inducted to the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame and being coached by two Hall of Fame coaches. I don't think a whole lot of guys have had that happen before, but it was great to see Coach Cower go, you know, go into the uh, Hall of Fame. And you know, the thing about Coach Cower, you know, Coach Cower, he was such uh, so enthusiastic when he came here in '92 as a coach. You know, he would be in the drills with us. He was high-fiving guys, chest bumping guys, uh, just so enthusiastic all the time and up tempo. And uh, I think guys kind of, you know, fed on that. And, um, and then also, you know, Coach Cowher was one of these guys who um, he allowed you to kind of intercede in, with the offense or, or, or the defense. And, you know, it wasn't completely uh, trying to think of the word that I'm, my I'm looking for. My way or the highway. Yeah, you my way or the highway. Yeah, yeah. So we had a, a say in the offense or defense. If we didn't think that, we, that it was going to work, you know, those guys listened to us as players. So we felt like we had a voice. You alluded to this briefly, but I'm wondering if you've spent, obviously you have, uh, spent a lot of time thinking about that you played for two Hall of Fame coaches. Uh, I would imagine as a player, 
they couldn't have been more different in different. terms of their personalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Coach Noel was, uh, you know, had been coaching for many years. And so he was on his way out and towards retirement. And then Coach Cower hadn't been too far departed from playing so, and coaching. So, you know, he was more enthusiastic. And then uh, Chuck Noel would just let the assistant coaches, um, you know, do their thing and, and make all the adjustments for us. But, you know, like I said, Coach Cower was right in the mix with us every five minutes in, in the huddle, high-fiving guys, chest bumping guys, and uh, just very involved. So to the day to day with the day to day uh, practice and corrections as well. You played in many memorable games. Um, uh, a couple come to mind. There, there are certainly more. Um, the '89 playoff game at Houston. Um, no one gave you a chance. Uh, you needed like a miracle Sunday to get into the playoffs. Yes. Gary Anderson wins it with the field goal in overtime in Houston. Uh, what are your rec recollections of that game? That was a great feeling. And then we had to fly back here, and I think we played Denver the next week uh, weekend. And then I got hurt, I think, in the second quarter or something and uh, had to go back into the uh, locker room. But, uh, you know, it was a great feeling just to advance to the uh, uh, second round of the playoffs. Not such a great memory in 1994 against San Diego. It, it remains one of the most devastating losses, certainly at home, uh, in Steelers history. Um, do you recall your feelings after that was over, especially having had a 13-3 to lead? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just things, I, I just, it's kind of hard to put your finger on it, you know. Um, it was cold all that time before that game. And then it was, what, 70-something degrees? And then yeah. it almost made it feel like Rainy, a home game. Rainy, but it was about But it was like about 70-something 70 70, degrees. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it almost made it like a home game for San Diego as well. Uh, so we didn't have the weather for an advantage. But uh, yeah, you know, that was, that was just a tough loss. And, you know, not too much you can do about it. The thing is, I mean, you, you got to play up to uh, your capabilities. I don't, get, I don't care who you're playing and what type of weather you're playing in. You know, you, you have to execute. And we didn't do it. Well, you made up for it the following year, uh, winning the game against Indianapolis. Jim Harbaugh's Hail Mary just yes, falling. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. What was your view of that play? Because that's a game-winning touchdown right there. I was saying, not again, not again. And <laughs> luckily, you know, when I uh, saw the ref say no, so of course, you know, you're elated and, uh, you know, jumping around and just uh, happy to uh, make it to the Super Bowl. And playing in the Super Bowl, again, not the outcome you wanted. Um, is that one of the highlights of your career, having played in the Super Bowl? It is, because you have guys who have played in the league for, you know, 10, 12, 13 years, never get a chance to play in a playoff game. We played in multiple playoff games and playing in the, uh, the big show in Super Bowl, that is the ultimate, you know, for a uh, professional player. I mean, to win it is the ultimate, but, you know, just to, just to make it there and uh, experience everything the Super Bowl is about, um, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's an honor. And uh, that's what I think a lot of guys, or, you know, most guys uh, want to do. This doesn't happen that often in professional sports, maybe a bit more in pro football, but with free agency and salary caps and so on and so forth, not many players get to play their entire career with one organization. Uh, we in Pittsburgh, Western Pennsylvania, uh, and all across the nation, Steelers Nation, believes that there's something special about the Steelers, the way the Rooney family from generation from the Chief mm -hmm. to Dan, now to Art the second. Um, that there's something different about the Steelers in your interaction with other players and your experience as a Steeler. Do you believe that that's true? There's something special about the Steeler organization. I do. I do. I think, you know, because the leadership of uh, this organization, you know, those guys treat you like family. And of course, you're going to have bad stories from guys as well, you know, that uh, feel like they were slighted. But overall, it's a great franchise to play, play for. And uh, they have a historic ownership group. Uh, you know, with the Rooney family. And, um, you know, for me, I did not want to go somewhere else and try to prove myself when I was already proven here in, uh, in Pittsburgh. And I wanted to stay with uh, one team. And um, I just thought it was uh, an honor for me to stay here and play in Pittsburgh uh, since those guys were originally drafted me. So, um, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to uh, be a one team player. And you were, and a one-city player. Lastly, Dramani, 
uh, I'm sure every fan base roots for its team. But again, maybe this is provincial, but it sure seems like the Steeler fans are almost a part of the team. And I wonder if you got that sense as a player. It's like Howard Cosell once said, uh, when you come to Pittsburgh, you not only have to play the Steelers, you have to play the whole the city. Thing. That's right. That's and, right. And I wonder if, if you felt that as a player. Oh, I did. I did. And, you know, and I still feel it to this day, no matter where you go, if people find out that you play for the Steelers. Nationwide, I've met Steeler fans everywhere. And uh, it's a great feeling. And I always go out of my way just to make sure I say hello uh, because, uh, you know, we need that fan support.